Now if you travel on extended periods of time in either an RV or a boat, you know that uh, food space, especially uh, fresh fruit uh, food space, is hard to come by. Your fridge is only so big and uh, by preparing your food in such a manner you can uh, fit more food in your fridge if you do a little preparation work. And this also works well for your home as well. So I hope these next few clips give you some ideas if you haven't already used them. Okay, I'm going to show you a little kitchen tip here. Many of you probably do this anyway. You buy your food in bulk and then you repackage it for freezing, but a lot of people don't. If you're single or if you're like a couple like my wife and I, uh, I make up our food in uh, one meal sections. So what I've done here is I've bought my cheese smokies in bulk. I've uh, repackaged them into uh, sandwich bags. Now you can use freezer bags. I find the sandwich bags to work just as well and uh, we don't keep them that long that it gets uh, frost bite in the in the freezer. So if you want to you can spend the extra money on a freezer bag or you can just put them in sandwich bags then I put them in a larger bag that goes into the deep freeze and I can just pull out the whole batch at one time and grab how many I need. It's just for my wife and I or if we have company. Okay we're repackaging our foods that we bought in bulk today and I'll just show you another little tip here. I've taken, uh, I bought my hamburger in bulk. There's just the two of us so one of these packs does us fine. And uh, I've cut it into approximately one pound sections. And now I'm going to repackage that and put it into the fridge. So we can just pull out one when we need a package for spaghetti or hamburger of whatever meal we're making. But the hardest part of this job is taking this section and getting it into the sandwich bag without getting it all over everywhere. So here's a little tip. Get a container, a plastic container. This happens to be a cottage cheese container. I've washed it out really clean. I've cut the bottom off. And now what I do is I take the sandwich bag place it over the bottom, get it nice and tight like so. Put it on the counter. Grab a section. Drop it in there. And there we go. We've got that in our little bag without any mess around the top. And after I'm done I'll wash my hands and I'll close these all up. Squeeze the air out. And uh, it's just a very inexpensive way to help you get the job done in your kitchen without making a whole lot of mess. I just press it down. Make sure the hamburger stays in the bag. I put it down, clean side to the counter. That way it doesn't get contaminated. From there, we've packaged up all our hamburger. Now you can use this little transfer container for fruit. Liquids would work great for liquids so you don't spill it all over everywhere if you want to freeze some uh, juices or whatever in a bag. But uh, there's a little tip. I hope you can use it. And uh, now we'll just wash everything up really good. Get my hands cleaned up and we'll finish packaging. The hamburgers. Next stage is to uh, flatten out my burgers. Like that. And uh, I shouldn't say burgers because they're not going to be hamburgers, they're just stock to be used in anything that I'm making, mostly in my spaghettis. And 
fastest. It's a good way to package it too if you're say you're a boater or a camper that goes away on extended trips. You can package up meals or prep your foods before going away and put them in your freezer. Take them out the day before and uh, you're ready to cook. In a matter of a half an hour or 20 minutes I've got uh, eight meals prepped here another eight meals here you can do the same with any food whatsoever with chicken fish and have it all prepped and ready to go in one meal portions I know it's a little bit of work but it saves you time at the end and uh, takes up far less room and there's no spoilage this way which is really nice because uh, food's expensive and uh, we don't want to have to throw any of it out if we can help that there we go we're prepped for 16 meals and more to come. So some of the things I've showed you are uh, handy tips if you're provisioning for a holiday in your RV. Uh, you can prep meals ahead of time or condiments ahead of time uh, and then pack what you need. Uh, if you're prepping for uh, your boat, your yacht, if you're cruising, you can uh, prep for meal sizes. It makes everything so much faster when preparing a meal. You can buy in semi-bulk and put the items up and then when you need them or you take them out of the freezer uh, a few hours ahead uh, you're ready to make your meal. So I'm just going to show you a couple more here that I had already gone ahead and done and one one particular one that we really like is bacon. Now I buy my bacon in uh, packages that contain four packages of bacon and I buy those four packages it was twenty one dollars and ninety eight cents so pretty economical for the amount of bacon I've got here and I cut the packages in half and I take eight strips eight half strips and that's perfect for two people now everything I'm showing you here is prepped for two people and uh, so the eight strips I have here, meaning four a piece, makes for a nice bacon and tomato sandwich or the side with your eggs. And uh, out of those four packages of bacon, I got one, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen meals for two people for twenty-one dollars and ninety-eight cents. So that's pretty cheap. So there's one hint. The other one is uh, vegetables. Now carrots, for some reason, I shop at uh, Superstore, the uh, Real Canadian Superstore, and for some reason I cannot find frozen carrots. It's frozen carrots and peas, or frozen carrots and mixed vegetables, and all I want is a serving of, fro of frozen carrots. So I buy my carrots in bulk. I bought a big bag of carrots the other day. I think it was four dollars and sixty nine cents and I peeled them and I sliced them with my little uh, automatic slicer and I put them up in one cup servings. In other words I take a cup, fill the cup up, dump it into my Ziploc bag and there's one vegetable serving for two people. Or I will take that and I will add it to my potatoes and mash them all together and it makes for a really nice sweet potato and you're mashing your potatoes and so for that four dollars there's my bag 
I'm not going to take them out and count them, but for four bucks, how can you go wrong? Take a bag of carrots out, dump it in some boiling water, and uh, you're away to the races. Or add it to your potatoes as you're boiling them. Next thing, smokies. These are cheese smokies. Buy them in bulk and then end up again. That's tonight's dinner. You can have that with sauerkraut on the side. And put them up in little sandwich bags. I don't even bother with freezer bags, there's no point. Little sandwich bags, and we've used a few out of here. But there you go, I've got meals there ready to go almost instantaneously and I don't have to deal with food that's uh, left over or that I've thawed too much and we don't get around to eating and end up throwing out. That's especially important if you're RVing or if you're uh, on a boat and provisioning for a boat because you can't always get to a store if you're out boondocking or you can't always get to a store if you're in the middle of the ocean. So by putting your th things together like this and taking what you need or taking all of it makes it so handy and there's virtually no waste. Well there, that's a few more tips and uh, I hope this has given you some ideas on how to provision for trips and long journeys. I was doing this behind the scenes when I was packaging up those meals but I might as well show you this too. This also works for your pets. I've got uh, a fussy eater dog. All she would ever eat is uh, breast of chicken cut up. And then finally she got tired of that. So now what I do is I buy an expensive steak. There's probably about $13 worth of steak. She's just a small dog. Many of you have seen her, Miss Lily. And I uh, brown these first, and uh, they come in large strips, cut them into manageable sizes, and I brown them all first, and then I put them in a pan, and I boil them for 30 minutes, and then I will cut them up into bite-sized pieces for her, like bite-sized treats, and she just loves it. So I mix the steak along with a little piece of cheddar cheese, diced up into little pieces as well. And uh, of late, she's really been enjoying that. And she's a fussy eater dog. This is, like I say, about $13, and I probably have uh, at least 10 to 13 meals out of it. So we're roughly talking a dollar a meal, and you can't feed your dog for under a dollar using some of the... the uh, prepared dog foods that I don't really recommend. This I know exactly what she's getting and uh, she's getting lots of nutrition without any garbage in it and I don't know what they're putting in some of the dog foods. Many of them are getting recalled. Anyway that's a little bonus tip I threw in there. I thought I was finished after I did the other two but I thought well that's a good tip as well for people that have pets and uh, have to take them with them in a trip or uh, with a, uh, if you live in a motorhome or, or uh, a boat, you can prepare their meals ahead of time, put them in the freezer, and uh, thaw them just prior to feeding them. Okay, I have all of Miss Lily's meat. It's all been browned and boiled for 30 minutes, and it's uh, mm, quite tender right now. So what I do now is I'll cut this up into meal-sized portions for her. And the way I do that, I use my uh, souvenir knife a friend of mine got me from Alaska. And uh, it works very well for cutting up a lot of thickness. I don't do them one at a time. I'll take three pieces like that and being careful not to get my fingers in the way. I can rock this knife to put a fair bit of pressure on it, but that's cutting through, I would say, almost an inch of meat there and cutting it into thin strips so that I can dice this 
for Miss Lily. She likes to have her her meat prepared in such a way that she doesn't have to chew too much. So she likes it nice and thin and you can see how nicely I can get these pieces of meat. If you could find yourself one of these Inuit skinning knives the rocker blade they are very sharp and they are very very handy in the kitchen for doing this sort of thing plus if you if you have a blubber a blubber party you can just take a chunk of blubber and cut it off with the knife careful not to cut your nose off and keep the fingers back and you notice how I cut, curl my fingertips in so when the knife comes down say I'm really close trying to guide the knife my knuckle touches the part of the blade that is not sharp and I can guide it into cutting a nice thin strip but this would truly lop off a finger Whoa, without even a flinch in the knife. Be a flinch in your finger, I'll tell you. So that's one good section. And you see what I've done here? It's all in tidbit sizes. Put it all into a bowl. And then what I do, I know a serving size for her is a nice heaping teaspoon, or a tablespoon like this, uh, serving spoon. So I'll take that and I'll put that into a little Ziploc bag and uh, that'll be one meal for her. They all go in the freezer, comes out a half an hour before she eats. I microwave it for 10 seconds and she has a nice warm steak dinner. I add a little bit of... Uh, like I say, dice cheddar into it, and she's a happy dog. I've got all of uh, Miss Lily's meat all diced up here in a bowl, and now I just have to uh, package it. And like I say, almost a full spoonful is what she likes to have, along with a little bit of cheese at supper time. Might be able to hear that. We got a little bit of a thunderstorm happening here. Rain's coming down. And it smells so nice, you know, that ozone you get in the air. Let's divvy up the rest between a few bags here. So now we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine meals for her, and that was uh, two packages of round steak. They were about six fifty a piece, so thirteen dollars, and I got nine meals. So, what am I? A dollar fifteen or dollar twenty per meal. That's pretty inexpensive, mind you. We have a small dog, and uh, she doesn't eat an awful lot. But at least I know that she's getting proper, you know, just pure meat with no additives. Here's all our meals prepped. Now I buy these little handy cheese blocks. I could cut this off a big block I guess too, but because we use so little cheese ourselves it usually goes moldy so this is probably the most expensive way to buy your cheese in these little convenient blocks. But I do not use a whole block 
at a time. This will feed her three times. I take a third of the little block and I cut that into little cubes as well. Break it up a little bit because it has a tendency to kind of stick together. Here's one I've just taken out of the freezer. I like to rotate them so they don't get too old, but she's a little ways away from supper yet, so this will have time to thaw. There we go. There. Her cheese. Now there's a meal for, well, let's say two dollars. Feed your dog a nice healthy meal. And if we were in Philadelphia, we could give this to her and tell her it's a Philly cheesesteak. Okay, that's it. These will go into a, uh, a larger bag with your name on it so that the, I don't eat her steak on it. Like so, like so, and then the one for tomorrow, I'm not going to freeze. I'll leave it in the refrigerator and I just add the cheese block in there so it doesn't dry out. So tomorrow, it's all ready for her to go and it's a quick meal. Well there you have it. I hope that helps you with your picky dog. I know they can be uh, a bit of a trial when they won't eat anything you give them but I've found the secret and we'll probably get tired of this in a little while and we'll go back to uh, the uh, diced chicken breast and cheese. Now here's another tip, and I almost missed it, it's sitting right on my counter here, and that's the bananas. Uh, these bananas I bought, they, were, they weren't green, they were yellow, uh, but they didn't have any marks on them like this or anything. But I bought these uh, five, well it's almost into its sixth day now, and I can't take credit for this tip. I saw it online and I, I tried it, I just want to pass it on, because bananas are so hard to keep unless you've got a big family and there's just the two of us and we don't eat that many bananas but wrap up you don't even have to take them off the stem I was taking them off the stem at first and wrapping them individually but this is just some of that cling wrap you could use saran wrap use anything and wrap up the end for some reason they they ripen faster with this end unwrapped and so here we are we're into our fifth five and a half almost six days and then you just cut off the bananas that you need just cut them off the stem and leave the others taped up, but uh, I find that actually works, so give it a try and save your bananas.